Hello. Mm, in the previous example, uh, in the previous video, I have given you an example of the the omitted variable bias and how it can mislead the results and your interpretation. And so, okay, we are going to start a serious discussion about that, and we would like to define the causal effect first. It's the, the causal effect or causality is the causality that you know so there is nothing new but uh, we will we will like just I will remind you what we want and what is the the object we would like to estimate <coughs> it is uh, important um, so simply speaking in one sentence a causal effect is defined to be the effect measured in an ideal randomized controlled experiment randomized controlled experiment is you can imagine the the experiments that uh, scientists do in their labs so if you could uh, like say for example there are say 100 mice here and another 100 mice there and you put different amount of doses of uh, medicines on those mice and see how long it takes uh, like uh, they 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 die or they cure their disease something like that so if you can control and if you can randomize everything under your control that's the ideal experiment of course we don't have such thing in uh, in in economics so when I say ideal ideal it's literally ideal there are so in even even the scientists natural uh, nat nat natural scientists have many problems in their labs like for example uh, errors measurement errors or reporting errors or or uh, like say for example think about psychological experiments huh? the participants in the experiments do not follow the the rule like uh, they have to be uh, like so for example I have to take medicine uh, like the exact amount at, at, at the same time every day but you cannot control everything then it's a little bit less ideal and second randomized which is the maybe the most important thing here you would like to randomize people to treatment group and control group maybe you may have heard about the treatment group and control group so say some people get the vaccine but others are not by comparing them we can uh, estimate identify quantify the effectiveness of the vaccine that's what COVID vaccines uh, went through like they are they are approved based on those uh, randomized experiments on a lot of people so the point here is it has to be random you cannot accept volunteers volunteers uh, maybe minimally you, they have to volunteer and the participants had to agree but the participants should not know whether they get a vaccine or a placebo and also the 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 experiment designer your researcher themselves uh, should not know who is treated and who's not it everything must be random and uh, chosen by computer and that guarantees that there is no systematic difference between uh, treatment group and control group and which guarantees that there is no confounding uh, variables there is no uh, omitted variables that determines whether you get a uh, treatment or not and third controlled uh, it's easy so you you not only you have a treatment group but also you need to have a control group because you need to have a, a comparison reference so that's control uh, and finally experiment experiment uh, is like literally assignment and the problem here it, 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 it prevents so you adjust some variable to, uh, like assign different values to different uh, participants to different subjects and it guarantees that there is no reverse causality so for example the it's a uh, it's something like this so you are 
you are say suppose that what uh, I have not thought about the example so think about this uh, I I am poor so I am poor so I need to borrow money so I go to bank I I, I apply for a loan and I am I am denied and then so I got even more poor then in this example because I'm poor I got denied and because I got denied I could not get education so I got poor again so the causality is going both ways right so then in this case in this case it is not an experiment you have to deny random people or you have to make random people apply for the loan so you have to randomize something under your control otherwise uh, you cannot distinguish what is causing what so you have to have clear cause and clear outcome but in in many data uh, usually two variables can kind of occur at the same time and they affect each other at the same time so that is reverse causality so anyhow the what we need here is we need an ideal randomized controlled experiment to estimate the causal effect ideally that's what we want that's what we want uh, uh, hypothetically say then you may think it's too obvious you, you may think it's really obvious uh, I'm just talking about quite trivial thing why is it important because mainly because such a thing does not exist in economics all the economists want to have wish to have a uh, uh, possible uh, experiments but usually not usually there is no experiments so uh, here I would like to mention the like Nobel Prize winners two years ago uh, that went to Banerjee Professor Banerjee Duvalo and Kramer it was quite shocking to many economists because uh, these these professors these economists are pretty young relatively young they are maybe they are in their early 50s I guess I'm not so sure but so so they 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 started their career in in 1990s so it's been only like 20 years and think about other winners like uh, they are near 80s in their 80s so people joke that uh, to get the Nobel Prize uh, the first requirement is to live long but they they were really fortunate to get the prize uh, so I think it's it's a, a kind of unfair uh, I don't they they are really good economists that's that's sure but uh, there were more people who deserve uh, the award for the same reason so the 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 selection committee the prize award committee announced that the reason for uh, this choice was for their experimental approach to alleviating global poverty so the more point so maybe global poverty is more about political uh, phrase and as an economist I appreciate their contribution as an experimental approach they try to mimic the ideal or uh, randomized control experiments as much as possible in their data and in their uh, models so it was a like kind of revolutionary uh, work in in um, in economics that but still I think there are other uh, very famous uh, economists who deserve the same award for the same reason anyhow anyhow it's important it's serious and it's quite recent still it's a it's a revolutionary uh, approach in economics you are learning very uh, up-to-date econometrics so then back to our case if you want to estimate the effect of causal effect of the student to teacher ratio on test scores the ideal randomized control experiment is to randomly assign students into different school districts right so or randomly assign the number of teachers uh, 
uh, to each school district. So randomize something, randomize students or randomize uh, teachers. And so the main point here is uh, the student to teacher ratio should be determined independently of anything else. So, so suppose that there are a lot of determinants of the test scores and all of these determinants should not be taken into account when you assign uh, class size. But in practice, in the reality, it's not possible. And in the reality, uh, the assignment is not random and it is chosen by the, the student's family and it depends on many other determinants of test scores. So uh, this dependence correlations uh, make the problem more complicated and especially this may be violated. This The violation of the first assumption uh, is the problem and this assumption is guaranteed by randomization. So you need randomization to ensure the first assumption uh, holds. And then if the treatment is not randomly assigned, then you see the consequence. So we have there we there is a easy to detect uh, uh, another confounding variable like uh, we used percentage of English learners, but you actually you can name a lot more like uh, men most of them are not in the not in the not observed in the data like family income or parents education or uh, yeah something like them that um, so then the problem here is so oh, it satisfies this is the confounding variable confounding variable satisfying these two things so the percentage of English learners determine affect affect uh, the test score and at the same time it is correlated with uh, the student to teacher ratio related to the student to teacher ratio. So simply speaking, casually speaking, the control group, uh, large class group and treatment group, small class group, uh, differ, they are different in a systematic way. In a systematic way, which means you can find a clear pattern, right? So there is some kind of clear pattern uh, the the in the small class the percentage of the percentage as the percentage of ESL students decreases the ratio of small class uh, increases so something like this uh, systematic pattern exists so uh, it causes the second uh, it, it it satisfies the second uh, condition as a confounding variable as a as an omitted variable. Uh, therefore, as I said, like randomization is the best way to guarantee that there is no systematic pattern in 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 the in the in the treatment and in the treatment variable of your interest with anything else. So randomization, the definition of the randomization is this. Yeah, like assigned regardless of uh, and the assi assigned without considering any other factors. So that will eliminate the difference in the percentage of ESL learners. So if it was randomized, then these numbers, the ratio, must be pretty much the same. They could be a little bit different caused by a uh, random error, but other than random error, there should be no pattern. So this much, uh, this much difference cannot occur in randomization. So, so that's the reason why we need randomization. And uh, uh, and so in this case, but we we don't have any experiments. So we just I wish I had an experiment, a perfect experiment. But unfortunately, we can't. We don't. We don't have them. So then what can we do? We need to control for those omitted variables. So percentage of ESL students will be controlled uh, in estimating the effect of student to teacher ratio. So 
Here, the, the authors describe it in three ways. Three ways to identify the causal effect. First, randomization. Randomization, <laughs> of course, it, if, you, uh, if you can do the randomization, there is no, no problem you cannot solve. But it is not possible, so it is not feasible. Uh, we are going to uh, cross out this. It's not your option. And second approach they suggest here is cross tabulation. So something like exactly like this, exactly like this. So not only uh, classifying into the class size, but also classify the observations into uh, like in, by by the percentage of ESL students. So if you divide the observations into finer cells, then the, the variation within each cell is really minimal. So in that sense, the effect of the, this commit omitted variables will be eliminated, nearly eliminated. So it is, so these, these values are better estimates than this one. However, the problem here is, okay, this is a nice example. It shows the idea, but the problem is, okay, this is, okay, this is good. But the problem here is, even after controlling for the percentage of English learners, I can think about like many more confounding variables like family income, as I said, parents' education, and like uh, school budgets, or like any, maybe the law or policy uh, in in the in by the local uh, local governments so how can we do that for each of the omitted variables we cannot handle all the possible uh, omitted variables using those two by a uh, two-dimensional table so this method is good to deliver the intuition and good uh, for presentation but it's not practical and you cannot you cannot uh you cannot uh go more than a simple example and finally the third is the conclusion what we are going to use this the third alternative is using on using a regression model where you include all the omitted variables into the uh regression model and then you will get something like this. So uh, I'm going to stop here and uh, we will start from this slide in the next lecture. So we will, it, it'll be simple terminology. And uh, and from now on, we are going to just maybe, it, it, it is kind of review of what we have done in the single regressor case. And I delivered all the intuition for multiple regressors case. So, um, so I believe it should be not so difficult in the next one. Okay, have a nice day and see you later. Bye.